What is going on, YouTube people? Got a fun one for you today. I am really excited about this one. This is an item that has been on my want list for a long time. They rarely, rarely come up for purchase. Uh, I got a little FOMO on this one. FOMO was kicking in hard. Uh, but there is a rare modern grail. I I'm considering this a grail. I don't know what defines a grail, what doesn't define a grail. But this is definitely a modern grail between the, it's not like super expensive, it's not cheap, but more so because of the rarity and kind of the unique nature around this particular item. So a little story time here, show it off, kind of give you the backstory on why this thing is the way that it is. What FOMO got me, you might ask? Well, X-Men 97. The amazing Disney Plus cartoon that recently came out uh, right after the first two episodes released. One of these popped up on eBay and it was fairly priced. Uh, they had it at $800. The last one sold for $750. And it was one of those ones where I really went back and forth on this. I submitted an offer at like $650 to see if maybe I could sneak one for like 700 or something, get a deal on it. Because these, like I said, these do not come to market at fair market value, or at least what they normally sell for. Usually when one comes into the market, it's usually at some super high price. I think the only one sitting on eBay currently is for a couple thousand bucks, and I don't think it's worth that anywhere close to it. And it's just not often that these come up at, a fair price. So, so a little bit of backstory. If you're familiar with comic books at all, or even if you're not, I know comic books, stick with me. It's a cool story. This is X-Men number 11. Uh, this is a very common book. There is nothing spectacular about this particular issue of X-Men. It is no one's first appearance. Uh, it's just a random issue in the Jim Lee X-Men run. Uh, this in a CGC 9.8, is I don't even know what these go for these days. Maybe a hundred bucks, maybe 150 bucks. I, I don't even remember, but it's not expensive. You can get one of these very, very cheaply. Raw, you can get one of these for probably five, 10, 15 bucks, depending on the condition. The thing about this book is this might be one of, if not the best X Men covers, I'm just going to go ahead and say it of all time. It's right up there, it is on a short list. And if you grew up in the 90s, this book came out in 1992, Jim Lee X-Men were it. That I mean, end of story, full stop. This particular cover also, other than Psylocke, who does appear in like a episode, is basically, it's missing Jean Grey and I guess technically Morph, but the bulk of this cover is the X-Men animated cast. So I've got, always got a little juice for that as well, but it is a fantastic cover. When I close my eyes and I think of the X-Men, I think of two versions. I think of this one and the Claremont run, like Giant Size X-Men 1 through the Dark Phoenix Saga, like that, basically classic X-Men number one, which I'm just gonna go ahead and grab it because I have it sitting right back here. This is the second version of the X-Men that I think of. You know, the more classic, you know, late 70s, early 80s squad. I grew up on this X-Men. I ended up falling in love with this team as well. But, so nothing super special about this book. However, this is where the grail part comes in. There's a second printing of this book. Well, air quote, second printing. Silver instead of orange on the background is the key difference here. This is called the Pressman Variant. Uh, some people refer to it as a second print. CGC labels it as a second printing. You can see right here, shipped with X-Men board game, silver inked cover. So why is this important and why does it su fetch such a premium, especially in a high grade? This version of the book with the silver cover was indeed shipped 
in a X-Men board game that came out in the early 90s. To the best of my knowledge, and someone in the comments can correct me down below, it was shipped unbagged and unboarded. It was just loose in a board game box. So you already see where this is kind of going on the being able to get one of these in a CGC 9-8. Imagine it banging around in a board game box and then, you know, it getting pulled out of there and actually being kept in relatively decent shape back in the early 90s. This particular book in a, on the CGC census, and I know that's not the end-all be-all. There are raw ones out there in the wild for sure, but not a ton of them. There are 262 blue labels on the CGC census. That's it. Total graded across all grades. There are 45 in a CGC 9-8. These do not come up very often. And as I said before, they do not come up for reasonable asking prices very often. That's part of the trick. Uh, you'll see a 9-8 pop up here and there. But when there's only 45 of them out there, and what I have found, you know, coming from the sports card side, uh, yeah, people flip comics. They make money off comics all the time. There are way more collectors in comics, in my opinion. I shouldn't say more. The percentage of collectors to flippers, it's way higher skewed to the collector side than in sports cards. So stuff like this, these low census you know, rare stuff don't come to market very often. Now, this one was actually freshly graded. This one was graded in March, I think, or maybe, oh, I'm sorry, January or February. It was graded earlier in 2024. Uh, it's a very nice copy, not a 9.9, um, but only 46 on the CGC census. Now, could it go up from here? Sure, sure. There's more of them out there in the, in the wild. Could get clean, pressed, bumped up, but... This thing's been around since the 90s. It is a widely known popular variant cover or second printing, like I said, whatever you want to call it. And just the unique nature of it with it being packaged in a board game with little to no protection and then being able to get one of those in a condition that would qualify as a CGC or a high grade copy, if you will, even if you don't want to use nine eight nine sixes, there are 66 of them on the census. There are 54 nine fours, and then it kind of trickles down from there. So nine six is the highest number. There are also some signature series uh, on the census as well. Also, in my opinion, as much as I love this cover, that silver cover looks stunning. I mean, they both look really good, but man, oh man. So I now have both of these. And the reason, like I said, why I qualify this as a modern grail is the rarity, kind of the history behind it. And this cover, if you are an X-Men collector, even though, you know, regardless of which one you get, you kind of have to have one of these in your collection. This also teams up nicely because the Jim Lee X-Men are extremely collectible. Uh, earlier this year, I picked up the X-Men annual number one. Which not once this is once again perfect example. Not an expensive book. Not nothing super crazy happens in this. Uh, annuals typically be, are thicker. They're a bigger book, tougher to grade in a lot of cases. These are very. I don't want to say very rare, but they are. There's not a ton of these in a CGC nine eight out there. There are some. I think there's a few hundred. Last I looked, I don't remember exactly. This is another one that does not come up to market very often. Um, I picked this one up last year. I've been chasing this one for a while and it took a while once again for one of these to pop up. Actually, there is not a ton of these at all. I just looked it up in the off screen. There's, there's less of this than the Pressman. Uh, there is 141 total of these graded. There are 48 CGC 9.8s on the census. This is only a couple hundred bucks. Uh, there's way more of these out in the wild. This was, you know, this was a regularly printed book. There was nothing super special about this one. But to kind of put together the three of these together, and sorry, I don't have the best way uh, to show off books with the current camera setup that I have. But to kind of throw all the classic Jim Lee covers together. And then I've always loved this cover as well. The classic X-Men number one. 
Um, so I'm going to switch up the display behind me now. Super happy to pair all these up. Got to put the family together. But that's it. X-Men number 11, second printing. Commonly referred to as the Pressman variant. Uh, has been obtained. FOMO into it a little bit. But, I mean, that's what it's all about. This, I basically, I don't want to say I spent nothing for. I used eBay spendable funds to buy this off of all the stuff I've been selling for my recent PA, PSA orders. So, that's really the whole, that's the whole game right there. That's the whole game right there. Use your knowledge to buy, sell, trade, grade, flip, make a little bit of profit. You're not paying your car. I'm not paying the car bills with it. I'm not paying the phone bill with it. I'm not going to the grocery store with it. Build up that little bankroll. And then when something comes up that you want to have for the collection, pull the trigger on that bad boy. So I basically, no money had to be removed from, you know, a checking account or a PayPal account or anything like that. I just use the eBay spendable funds from the stuff I've been selling over the last month or so with those recent PSA submissions. It's the way to do it. Use whatever hobby it is that you're in to fund it and make purchases on the stuff that you truly want to own and tuck away. This one will go behind me and be proudly represented on the display behind me for quite a while. That's all I got for you, boys and girls. On to the next one. I already got one in mind. I got one in mind that's in the same vein as this one. Uh, it is a rare printing of a modern-ish, 90s-ish X-Men book. If you know, you, you might know. You could go ahead and fire guesses away down below. I don't know how many people will get it. Um, we'll see if we can track it down. They tend to be very pricey. This one was definitely a way bigger priority than the other one. That's all I got. Catch you boys and girls on the next one. Face.